Hey everyone, welcome back to Education is Life, your go-to channel for unlocking the wonders of learning. It is me, Joe Edgo, and today we are starting a brand new series, Level Up with Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi, IoT Project Development Crash Course. This new series gets you building amazing IoT projects fast with a powerful Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi. We'll break down the basics of working with digital and analog pins, then move on to writing code that interacts with sensors, displays, and actuators. We'll conquer network setup and connect your project to the internet using Adafruit I.O. via MQTT for remote data visualization. We'll show you how to build a smart home project with Home Assistant. We'll then explore advanced topics like CAN bus communication and data logging to ATF card. Finally, we'll turn your Arduino Uno into a user-friendly human interface device. Throughout this series, we will be working alongside with this 52Pi Cloud Ready Starter Kit, a great companion for your IoT journey. A huge thanks to 52Pi for sponsoring this crash course on building amazing IoT projects with a new Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi. So, if you're interested in getting started with this Cloud Ready Starter Kit, you can check it out on their website at 52pi.com or at Amazon. The links are provided below. So, in today's lesson, we are going to unpack this awesome kit and get familiar with all the components inside. We'll take a quick look at each one and see what cool IoT projects we can build with them. We'll then get familiar with the new Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi development board, exploring its features and pinouts. Then, we'll go through the installation of the Arduino IDE software and prepare your board for programming. Finally, to ensure everything is working correctly, we'll upload some sample sketches to your Arduino board. So, let's begin. This kit consists of several components, and we'll discuss them briefly one by one. This is a soil moisture sensor module. It is like a tiny treasure hunter that digs for water. See these two prongs here? We stick those in the soil, and they measure the electrical resistance. The more water means lower resistance, kind of like a pathway for electricity. Now, this little brain uses that to figure out the percentage of water in the soil as a whole. This is perfect for your science and IoT projects. Imagine using this in your garden to know exactly when to water. This is a raindrop sensor module. It is a clever tool that uses this nickel-coated board here. It's like a tiny rain detective. When it's dry, the resistance is high. But when raindrops fall, they act like conductors, lowering the resistance. The more rain, the lower the resistance. Now, this brain translates that resistance into a signal telling your Arduino, hey, it's raining. We can use this in cars for automatic wipers, in gardens for smart irrigation, and even in homes for controlling things like skylights. This is an ultrasonic sensor. Think of it as a super precise bat. It uses sound waves to measure distances, perfect for robots and automations that need to avoid bumping into things. See these two eyes here? One sends out the sound waves and the other listens for them to bounce back. 
this little computer then figures out how far away something is based on the echo time. This little guy here is a temperature and humidity sensor. It senses the air around it, keeping track of both how warm and how wet things are. No need for complex setups. It gives you a simple digital signal on this data pin right here, and it can sense both temperature and humidity. See these pins, VCC ground and data, that's all you need to connect it. This is a sound sensor module. It's like a tiny ear that listens for noises. Anything louder than a set level triggers this digital signal right here. You can even adjust how sensitive it is by turning this knob. Think of alarms, light shows triggered by sound, or even simple sound effects in your projects. This is a capacitive touch module sensor, also called a touch switch. Imagine it as an invisible button. Just a tap here sends a signal just like a regular button. It is used instead of a button on many new devices because it makes the product look neat. These are great for making projects look clean and modern like a touchable lamp. This tiny guy here is the BMP280 air pressure meter, an absolute barometric pressure sensor module. It is super small and uses little power, perfect for portable projects like weather stations or drones. Imagine it as a tiny weatherman. It can sense the air pressure around it, which can tell you things like altitude or even upcoming weather changes. This little chip here is the MPU6050. It's like a tiny motion tracker with the gyroscope and accelerometer inside. It can sense tilting, moving, or even spinning. Imagine using this in robots, game controllers, hand gesture recognition, and other electronic devices that require motion detection. This is a speaker amplifier. It takes a weak audio signal to make it loud and clear for your speaker. This module has a mute switch, high-level mute, low-level playback, and it is recommended for use with 3 watt speakers. This is a CAN bus module. Think of it as a highway for high-speed data transmission inside your project, especially for things like cars or robots. It lets different parts of your project talk to each other quickly and reliably. This is an LCD 1602 display. It can show messages and info on this screen right here, and this is good for projects when you want to display the sensor readings, menus, or anything you want. It has a backlight that can be enabled by this jumper cap, and an adjustable contrast through this blue potentiometer. This is a two-channel relay. Think of it as a controller for high-power devices. You can connect this to your AC mains up to 250 volts AC at 10 amperes. This is great for turning on lights, solenoids, motors, or anything that needs a bigger jolt. It has a tiny switch inside this box that controls them with a simple signal from your Arduino pins. This is a micro servo motor. Imagine it as a super precise mini motor. It can turn its arm very accurately, perfect for robotics applications, smart car steering, drones, or anything that needs controlled movement. These little guys here are buzzers. Think of it as a tiny speaker that can make simple sounds. They are great for alarms, timers, or even letting you know when something happened in your project, like a confirmation when a user presses a button. This is a speaker module. It brings your project sounds to life. It takes electrical signals and turns them into sounds you can hear. This is perfect for alarms, music, or any project that needs audio. This speaker has 3 ohms of impedance with a power handling capacity of 1 watt. It also includes basic components such as buttons, LEDs, and resistors. This nifty little guy here is a TF card reader module. It works with this micro SD card, sometimes called TF cards. Think of it as a tiny flash drive reader for your Arduino project. You can pop in a TF card loaded with music or data that your Arduino can read. Imagine using this for data logging projects or storing sound effects on your Arduino. This one is a USB card reader. You can use it to plug in your micro SD card to your computers if yours doesn't include a built-in TF card reader. By the way, this TF card includes all the files you need to learn how to program your Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi using all these components. It contains the necessary software, official data manuals, CAD files, sample codes, and documentation. 
Now, let's explore the features of this Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi and see how it compares to its predecessor, the classic Uno R3, and the new Uno R4 Minima. For over a decade, the Arduino Uno R3 has been a staple for makers of all levels. It's known for its simplicity, affordability, and wide range of compatible components. This familiar analog and digital pins let you connect all sorts of sensors and actuators, while this USB port allows for programming. But let's face it, technology marches on. Now, the new Arduino Uno R4 comes in two flavors, the Minima and the Wi-Fi version. Since the R4 boards are built upon the familiar features of the Arduino Uno R3, familiar elements like the reset button and the power LED remain, ensuring a smooth transition from Uno R3 users. Just like the Uno R3 board, the Uno R4 boards provide users with access to a wide range of pins. The R4 boards have 14 digital pins from D0 to D13, which can be configured as either inputs or outputs. Some of these pins serve another purpose. D0 and D1 are used for UART receive and transmit respectively. It can be used for communication between an Arduino board and a computer, another microcontroller board, or with other devices such as a GPS module or RFID module. Pins D2 and D3 are used for hardware interrupts so that the processor can respond quickly to an external event. D3, D5, D6, D9, D10, and D11 can be used for pulse width modulation or PWM for controlling servos, speed controllers, or for LED dimming effects. They also support SPI or Serial Peripheral Interface via D10 to D13 for communicating with one or more peripheral devices quickly over short distances. They have an inter-integrated circuit or I2C bus marked with these pins SDA and SCL. This is useful for communicating with several compatible devices like LCD and OLED displays. They offer six analog input pins from A0 to A5. Note that pins A4 and A5 are both connected to the same I2C bus marked with the pins SDA and SCL. Now, the Uno R4 is Arduino's response to the changing landscape. Although the R3 and R4 boards have a lot in common, the R4 boards boast a significant upgrade under the hood. While the Uno R3 uses the Atmega 328P, an 8-bit AVR RISC-based microcontroller, the new Uno R4 boards are based on the Renesas' RA4M1 microcontroller featuring a 32-bit ARM Cortex-M4 microprocessor. This Cortex-M4 operates at a clock speed of up to 48 MHz, nearly three times faster than Uno R3's 16 MHz processor. The Uno R4 features 32 kilobytes of static RAM and 256 kilobytes of flash memory, a substantial leap compared to the Uno R3's 2 kilobytes of RAM and 32 kilobytes of flash memory. This translates to more space for your code and variables. This is 8 times bigger in terms of the program size that can be uploaded and 16 times bigger in terms of memory capacity for program execution. The Uno R4 boards ditch the older USB-B port in favor of the USB-C port for easier connection to your computer. They also feature two separate hardware serial ports, whereas the Uno R3 offers only one. The first port is exposed via the USB-C and the second port is exposed via the RXTX at pins D0 and D1. The analog input pins now support up to 14-bit resolution, while the R3 only supports 10-bit resolution. They also include a digital-to-analog converter or DAC at pin A0 that supports up to 12-bit resolution. This can act as a genuine analog output pin, which means it's even more capable than PWM pins. The Renesas RA4M1 MCU has an internal operational amplifier or op-amp that is exposed on the Uno R4 boards through pins A1, A2, and A3. They have built-in support for HID or Human Interface Device, which can act as a keyboard or mouse and send keystrokes or coordinates to your computer via native USB. This feature is found on most modern-day development boards but not on R3. Finally, the Uno R4 boards have a built-in CAN module. This CAN bus or controller area network bus allows you to minimize wiring for more efficient communication between different components of your project. The R4 boards have a total of four LEDs, three of which are programmable. The LED built-in, it is the classic built-in LED attached to pin 13, the RX or receive, and the TX or transmit LED. 
and the on-power LED, but this one is not programmable. Although all three boards maintain compatibility with the standard 5V power supply, the Uno R4 goes a step farther with a wider input voltage range of up to 24 volts. While both Uno R4 versions share many processing upgrade, the Uno R4 Wi-Fi goes a step further. It integrates an ESP32-S3 module, offering onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capabilities. The Wi-Fi has a bitrate of up to 150 Mbps, while the Bluetooth module supports Bluetooth Low Energy and Bluetooth 5 capabilities at a speed of up to 2 Mbps. The Uno R4 Wi-Fi has a noticeable built-in 12x8 LED matrix, which can be programmed to display graphics and animation. It also has a quick or Istema connector that you can use to connect modules, often allowing you to daisy chain several modules and control all of them through a single connector. To get started building your Arduino projects, go to the official Arduino download page and grab the latest version of the Arduino IDE. It is currently version 2.3.2 at the time of this recording. Arduino supports Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. Choose the installer that matches your operating system. The installation process is straightforward. Just follow the on-screen instruction. Once the IDE is installed, launch it. The Arduino IDE automatically installs some basic libraries, but we need to add support for the Uno R4 boards specifically. Go to the Boards Manager and search for the Uno R4 boards by Arduino and click Install. Grab the USB cable that came with your kit. Connect the USB cable to your computer and the Uno R4 board. The power LED on the board should light up, indicating a successful connection. By default, the Uno R4 Wi-Fi comes preloaded with a blinking program for the onboard LED and a cool animation on the LED matrix. Now, your computer should automatically recognize the Arduino board and assign a COM port to it. You can verify this by going to your device manager and looking under ports. Your Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi board should be listed there. In the Arduino IDE, look for the Tools menu. Go to the board and select the appropriate option. Next to the board selection, you'll see a port menu. Choose the COM port your computer assigned to the Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi. Let's test uploading a simple program to verify everything is working. Go to the File menu, navigate to Examples, LED Matrix, and choose Play Animation. This will open a new window with the Play Animation sketch code. Quick note for beginners, a sketch is what Arduino calls its program. It is written in a variant of C++, so some C++ knowledge is helpful. Make sure you've selected the correct board and port in the menu. Now, click the Upload button in the top left corner of the IDE. This will compile the sketch and upload it to your Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi board. If there are no errors, you should see a success message. And congratulations! You've successfully set up your Arduino Uno R4 and uploaded your first program. Now, you're ready to explore the exciting world of Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi projects. Again, thank you so much for joining me in this first lesson of this series, Level Up with the New Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi, IoT Project Development Crash Course. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more Arduino project tutorials, hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so you never miss a new upload. You can also share this video with your friends who might be interested in learning more about Arduino. The more viewers we have, the more in-depth content I can create for you in the future. So keep learning, keep experimenting, and always remember education is life. See you in our next lesson. Happy coding!